healing the comatose. September 19, 2014 As we said in our previous communication, emptying yourselves of the influence of the ego is one of the best things you can do, if you're looking to lighten your vibration or help others do the same in preparation for the ascension-related events that are to come. We mentioned these events in a previous communication as well, and will reiterate that there will be many but they won't happen for a long amount of your fading concept of time. A lot will need to happen before the greatest and boldest ascension-related events you've heard so much about are able to manifest, and we're counting on the conscious community to do what's required to lighten your vibration, and help usher in your new era of collective harmony, abundance, and togetherness. The unity of mankind is as inevitable as the collective ascension it'll cause, and we note that many of you are ready and willing to get active in restoring your planet but wonder just how you can do this. What can you do to assist in the ongoing restoration of consciousness and the inevitable and practically indescribable changes that'll result? Here's what you can do. From our perspective, one of the best things you can do is to live in love. Constantly express the brimming, joyful emotions you can now feel to everyone around you who's in need of upliftment and enlightenment. Embody the love you are at your core, and observe the changes that result to yourselves and your planet, which you'll notice are more potent with each attempt you make to open up and see what a loving, centered frame of mind heart has to offer you. This is among the best things you can do to bring about the future you've waited so long to behold, but beyond that, we recommend you come together with every other conscious individual who's ready to start making changes and discuss these matters amongst each other. Discuss how you can individually and collectively bring about the changes you've waited so long to see. Devise real plans, strategies, and solutions to the problems your planet currently faces, and seek to expand your group as much as you can. Include as many awakening seekers as you can in your discussions about how you'll change your planet and what you'll do to bring about the immense social shifts required before you can collectively ascend. We've mentioned before that you're very powerful as individuals, but you're even more powerful as a collective. Getting together and discussing the best ways you can change your planet is highly recommended, and you'll notice that your work becomes not only easier and more free-flowing, but more enjoyable when you aren't the only one doing it. We recommend all of our channels, for instance, Come together in a group to talk about the process of channeling and how you can awaken the rest of the planet to the reality of this practice. Our scribe could create a group and invite many other well-known channels into it to discuss all of this if he wanted, and if he ultimately decides not to take up this venture, another channel or a seeker who's interested in channeling could start such a group and invite many prominent channels into it so you can all discuss various things that are relevant to the channeling process and generally healing your world. Every channel for the company of heaven wants to create direct change, and wonders how it can be done, and we note that the perspective of many of our channels is that continuously picking up on the energies and expressions of the higher realms is one of the best ways to raise the collective vibration and, thus, enact real and lasting change. This is certainly true. But the puzzle isn't complete until you can all come together and share personal revelations and musings on the act of channeling. For humanity to come together, those of you who are heavily involved in spirituality and topics that have to do with changing your planet will also need to come together, and with this said, we'll answer the question we've been given on this day. Question. Healing or letting go of someone in a coma. How do we know if we are to hold on or let go of people in coma state? Also, can an energy light healer do anything to heal them and bring them out of their coma state? Depending on the circumstances surrounding the situation, an advanced light worker or healer with a lot of training and practice could indeed bring a comatose person out of their state and renew their body with the consciousness that's usually off exploring an etheric realm. When a person's comatose, their spirit is still very active in some cases. There are other cases where the spirit seems asleep just as the body is, but the majority of coma cases see the person who experiences the coma traveling to various etheric planes and learning things about themselves and their existence they would have never been able to learn on earth. 
Most of these memories aren't retained in the person when they wake up, but there have been a few cases of people awakening from comas and reporting strange, bizarre, and amazing higher dimensional experiences that the people around them usually assume were dreams or some other explainable phenomena. As far as holding on to or letting go of someone who's in this state, we recommend you let your heart guide you in every moment and with every decision. There'll be times when you feel like letting go is the best option, and there'll be other times when you want to grasp the person and hold them as close to you as you can, for we understand and empathize with the fact that you don't want to let them go. Why would you? Why would anyone want to let go of a dear soul who they've grown close with? We certainly understand that it can be difficult to allow yourself to let go of someone you've grown to hold close to you, but we recommend full, unhindered acceptance of the unfortunate situation you've been presented with. While we can't offer any sort of prediction as to the fate of the referenced coma victim, we can encourage you to let go and allow spirit to take the situation in whatever direction is meant for you, the victim and everyone else involved. We can say that if this soul were to pass into the fourth dimension, they'd find a wonderful, heavenly home in those loosened and refined etheric realms. They'd certainly enjoy themselves, and even though they could have some initial difficulty adjusting to the conditions of their new home, they'd eventually settle in and enjoy their lives far more than they did on Earth. We don't say this to forecast a potential transition, and again, the situation could go in either direction. With love in our one heart and compassion for how you're feeling in this difficult time, we encourage you to embody as much love and positivity as you can in hopes that it helps the physical ailments the person's experiencing. Send your love, regardless of its strength. Whether or not you consider yourself an advanced light worker or healer, you can send as much pure love as you can muster up to this soul in hopes that it helps them through the difficult journey they've embarked on and even if they were to slip away into the etheric realms, you'd still find in the end that your light made a huge and important difference in the entire process. Above all, we encourage you to keep strong and keep the faith in the face of any pain or disappointment associated with this situation. Know that you and the person you refer to are being watched over by more guides and angels than you could count or fathom, and know that this situation is in the hands of this soul's guides, as well as your guides and the guides of various other people who are close with this soul. We'll make our final expressions for this communication with unrelenting joy for the things you're destined to experience in your future, which we know you'll pull to yourselves via your thoughts and actions in every moment. While a lot of heartbreak and tragedy continue to manifest on your planet every day, and some of it manifests very close to home for many of our readers and the conscious public overall, you can still embody the mystical love that'll bring you and the rest of your planet back into a higher state of consciousness where death, lack, and various other things that are associated with your lower realms don't exist. You'll rediscover infinity in all of its glory and definition when you're back in the higher realms, and we excitedly await the time when every soul can discover their inner realms and the flowing perceptual gifts that result. This time isn't far off. But as we're fond of saying, its manifestation hinges on the work you do in this and every moment of now. Continue to be active light workers, healers, and creators of your new earth, and always remember that you have the infinite support of your higher selves, your guides, and every other facet of the company of heaven who watches and assists you with love in our hearts and the willingness to do everything we can to help you navigate the difficult lower vibrational experience you're immersed in. Your trials and challenges may continue to be difficult, but as your collective vibration rises to new and unprecedented heights, they'll become easier, and your ability to open up to the higher realms will increase as a result. Everything is lightening and refining in this transformative time, and this includes each of you. Keep this in mind as you greet the pains and stresses of daily life on Earth, because you're slowly yet surely creating heaven. Thank you to my higher self and spiritual guides. Channeled through Wes Anak. CultureofAwareness.com